Ladies and gentlemen, Project Entertainment Network presents The Mondo Method. Introducing first, he's the mentor and the greatest manager of all time, Mondo Guerrero. And from parts unknown, up and coming superstar, The Great Buddha. Okay, so maybe their names are really just Armand, Rosamelia, and Chuck Buddha, and Armand's gonna teach Chuck how to write a book, or maybe grow a beard, and maybe you'll learn something while they're at it. Without any further ado, here's Armand and Chuck. And welcome to another exciting episode of the Mondo Method Podcast. I am your co-host, Armand Rosamilia. And I'm the other co-host, Chuck Buddha. And we are finally in October, Chuck. Wow. It's still like a thousand degrees here in Florida. It does not feel like October. And I'm looking at the, um, you know, you can look at the the 10-day, 14-day forecast. Mm-hmm. It's 90s like every every day. I'm like, this is this is ridiculous. Yeah, it's kind of similar here in Tennessee. It's like 85 every day. Like, you know, it's weird. We've had a, a, a little breeze outside, though. So um, it, it's hot, but it's not humid. And unless you're in the sun for long periods of time, you don't feel too, too bad. So, yeah. See, it's it's the problem is like um, the other day, me and my wife were out and it was it said the car says 90. And then I'm like, there's no way it's... And I looked up, it was like, feels like 107. <laughs> I said, why don't you just say it's 107, though? Like, I'm, I'm literally sweating. I, I, I came home, we were out for like two hours, and I took like a four and a half hour nap. It just completely wiped me out. Yeah, I don't understand that whole feels like thing. Like, why don't they just tell you that that's what, yeah. what the temperature is then? Just stupid. Just to make It makes no freaking sense. Like, I haven't opened my windows in months. Like I can't, um, I can't wait till like December and January when I can actually open all the windows, turn the air off, and not have like a five hundred dollar electric bill every month. Yeah, it's just uh, crazy, ridiculous. It's hot. Yeah, it's disgustingly, uh, disgustingly hot out. But whatever. Oh, you know what is not disgustingly hot? Mm. Reapers Brew Coffee. Oh, that's right. Great guess, Chuck. Reaper's Brew Coffee. You got it on the first shot as usual. <laughs> <laughs> Check them out. Reaper'sBrew.com. Uh, two delicious flavors. They have um, mugs. They have a lot of other really cool things. Check out the website. You've you've uh, we've been talking about them for for many years now. Several, several, at least. several, several many years. A couple, three years. And uh, so check them out and use Mondo at checkout, M A N D O. You get 10% off a of new orders, plus you receive a free gift. Uh, check them out, reapersbrew.com. I am not drinking Reapers Brew. I am drinking a uh, Duncan iced coffee uh, with a, li- a light and sweet of Britney Spears with mocha. Mm. Because it is 1,000 degrees out. Even though I had, and I had to leave the house today. You don't want to know why I had to leave the house today? Tell me. As we are recording this, I, um, every year, I send out uh, several hundred books to little free libraries across the world. Wow. And uh, 250 this year. And I finally got my ad approved in the group. And so I immediately, like at 10, 10 o'clock this morning, they approved it. I rolled out of bed at like almost 1030 this morning. Because I was up to like two two thirty playing Minecraft, <laughs> I, I was I was like I gotta go to bed, um, <laughs> so I get up and uh, I had already had like fifty or sixty. It was like a half an hour by the time I got my coffee and everything, and uh, so I went I, I went about four hundred before I shut it down, and I had to delete the ad and then uh, so I'm going through them, but I got stamps dot com, which oh my god makes everything so much easier. Free plug. Yeah, stamps.com. <laughs> Check them out. Uh, and if you use Mondo, which I don't know. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so I got like 50 of them uh, together this morning. I, I just 
copy and paste and thank you, blah, 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 boom. And uh, I did, I was on Twitch today. And then right after Twitch, I put my shoes on and I was like, all right, let me, let me run off. It's, it hasn't rained yet. And I'm hungry and I'm actually out cruising in my charger. So I got a crystal. Or as they say down here, crystals. And um, I pull up to the drive-thru and I see clouds coming at me. And I'm like, all right, I, I still have time here. And the girl says, uh, I'll be right with you. I said, okay. And then I wait and then like, all of a sudden, her microphone is on. And she's talking to somebody else in there about what a piece of shit her boyfriend is. Oh, boy. And she caught him uh, hitting on his her sister, and he's sending, he's sending dick pics to her girlfriends, and on and on and on and on. <laughs> and it's like five, I'm like, so now it's five minutes, like literally five minutes. And you know, sitting at the drive-thru for five minutes, that's a long time. Yeah. And now it's I got, an eternity. It's an eternity. Now I got cars piled up behind me. So I'm like, hello. And I'm yelling, like, hello. And she just keeps talking and talking and talking. So finally I was like, you know what? Screw this. So I just drove away. And then I uh, I turned around and I, I drove back past it. And nobody had, there still wasn't an order left. So it was like another two minutes. Uh, so then I go to Duncan. But, of course, wasting that you know, 10 minutes there. Now it starts raining. So now I'm pissed. So I get my, I get my Duncan, I get my coffee. And I, um, by the time I get to the post office to drop uh, like 50 of these envelopes, it is monsoon season raining. Oh man. And it's, and I'm so pissed now and I want to go back and punch that girl in the face. I'm so mad. So I finally, I was like, I waited for like 15 minutes sitting in the car and it just got harder and harder. And I finally just grabbed the box of books and I just ran in. and Because they're all paid for, which is cool, you know? Mm-hmm. So I Yeah, just, but you don't want them all wet. You don't you want know? them wet. So I'm like covering them and I'm running. I'm soaking wet and the wind is buffeting me. And I finally get them inside and I dump them, I dump them all in there. The only good thing is there was a, there was a woman in there that uh, came running in. And uh, she was soaked. And she had no bra on with a white oh. shirt. Oh. And I just like, you know, you, you, nipples popping and everything. I was like, oh my God. Holy crap. And uh, so, um, but then so I got soaking wet and I felt disgusting getting back in the car, driving home soaking wet. Well, every cloud has a silver lining, I guess. Does it I still cool? haven't been to Crystals. And I've been down here for year and a half almost a year and a half it's like it's white castle but the the bread is crummier see i'm always afraid because there's a whole mess of them but the ones that are nearer to my house um or where i drive they're always empty like nobody's ever there <laughs> and and it looks a little run down so then i worry i'm like okay am i am i buying hamburgers from a crack house or something, you know, like, yeah. um, it just doesn't, I, I don't know, but, but I'm dying for white castle. So like, I, I, I'm like, maybe I should just go and, and check it out. Aren't you, I, I know uh, it's going to be less than next time you yeah. head up to Jersey. You got to put that into your itinerary. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely going to work it in, um, without a doubt. So it's, uh, and hopefully I can bring a Crave case, because the only White Castle in the entire state of Tennessee is in Nashville. And, of course, when I was there, I forgot and didn't hit it up. Yeah, so. we when we were leaving Nashville, we passed it on the way out. But I had we had had it not too long, because we have one in Orlando. Oh. So we would drive down. When my daughter was living in Orlando, um, we would drive down there and then meet her there. And it was really like, yeah, she'd be like, you're just down here for White Castle and then to meet me. I said, yeah, pretty much. I could see you anytime. Yeah, I do miss the fresh ones. I was lucky Liz found, I don't remember if it was Kroger or Publix, but she found the the frozen ones. They're not as good. They're not as good, but it took the edge off. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're, if you like, need, see now, do they, so uh, years ago, when they first started putting them in in the grocery stores frozen, mm-hmm. I got them and they all had ketchup on them. 
Yeah, these didn't. And I was like, that's disgusting. I don't want these. So I've never, I've never gotten them again. Oh, I never thought about that. So you special order yours every time you go because you don't do the condiments. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, I, I, everything is everything for me is uh, is plain plain with cheese. Hmm. Yeah, the, the the ones from the supermarket were plain. I, you know, it, they didn't even have a ton of onions on it. It was it was kind of bland actually. But but yeah. like I said, it was good because I haven't had it. It's good if you haven't had years. it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you would like crystal. But it's not it's not white cat. Like if you didn't know any better, you know, like mm-hmm. even even Shelly who grew up down here, so she grew up on crystal. She was like, the the white cat the white cat is better. The bread is is much better. Yeah, I mean the bread does make the burger. I mean, yeah. Good. is that <sighs> our is that our is that our show this week? Is we're gonna talk about? God, it? I wish it would be because now I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I was like, <laughs> I had a, uh, I had a. Um, uh, bacon egg and cheese croissant like four hours ago so i'm 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 a little hungry we always record these before dinner and i'm like now i'm oh. ripping saliva and thinking about yeah. white castles but and my, no, and, my, and my wife is going to her her parents tonight for a couple hours while we record so i'm not getting any food for a while yeah i'm not gonna get anything for a while either yeah. well luckily i have a topic nice that we could use. I stole it from you. You're welcome. As thank thank you. As I've been known to do. So, um, it's funny. It, you know, you sent this um, this clip of an article from self publishing with Dale dot com, and uh, I've actually listened to the to the podcast. His his show. It's mm-hmm. uh, it's nice and short and right to the point and stuff. Um, but so so the article. From Dale is Amazon KDP pre-order five reasons to use it with Dale Roberts. So um, I, I thought this would be kind of fun to talk about um, since we all know my tragic history with. <laughs> uh, I, I guess I should say tragic history. I had one St- stupid history with, with one this. stunad with it. You know, yeah. <laughs> I use that word wrong, but whatever. <laughs> um, I was the do not. So, um, but no, he makes a good case. And, you know, uh, going through the article, um, again, just looking at some of the stuff that I've done recently, uh, and, and you've done really well with the pre-orders, especially with, uh, with the um, First Coast Thriller series. So I figured, yeah. hey, this is probably a good time for us to revisit it because we're actually starting to do better with pre-orders. So. Right. And as we are recording this, I am three days away from a new book coming out, which is on pre-order. And this last week, I've almost doubled the pre-orders. Wow! Which is which is unreal. H- have you been doing like a special push uh, on the uh, the new release? I do or... a I do a two-fisted approach. I like saying that. Um, so the fr- <laughs> the first book. This is the fifth book. Right. The first book has been ninety nine cents uh, a deal for a week, the leading up to it. So that'll end on the fourteenth, and then the fifteenth, the um, the book will come out. This is actually an October episode we're recording, but we're recording this back in the middle of uh, September. Right. Just just for those who who listen and go, wait a minute, I think that book is already out. It's been out, so buy it. Um, so I'll do a pre order. At ninety nine cents, plus I'll do a ninety nine cents first book the week before, and then I am doing a ton of uh, free ads, uh, like Twitter ads, like just Twitter thrown out there, uh, BookBub ad, Facebook ad, stuff like that, uh, and then I do a ton for the first book. I'm doing all of those newsletters. So I'm spending like five hundred dollars on newsletter stuff to buy the first book. So the first book is selling a ton, and now it's starting to move into the second book, and it'll move down the line, which is great. But also, uh, I'm making people aware that the fifth book is also ninety nine cents, but it will go back up on the day of release. So I think that's also helping. People are buying the first book, and then buying the fifth book. So did you say that you're doing the ads for the fifth book or for the first book? I'm doing the newsletters 
for the first book. Okay. I'm doing a, a Facebook ad and a BookBub ad for the fifth book at 99 cents uh, the month. So the month leading up to, so the middle yeah, of nice. August till the, till the middle of September when the book goes live, I'm doing basically like 30 days of running. Uh, hey, this book is on pre-order at 99 cents kind of thing. Right. Okay. And because of the first book being on sale now, I'm getting a lot of pre-orders on this one. So my guess is people are reading the first one and really liking it and going, wait a minute, look, this fifth one is on at 99 cents and it's going to go to 2.99. So let me buy it now. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm making money that way. And then hopefully obviously book two, three, and four will eventually sell while those they're, they're looking at it too. So you always got to look at a series as in not, a one book, but you're looking at it as five books. It's like thirty dollars you're going to make, or whatever it would be. You know what I mean? Right. You got to look at it as a, as a series. You're you're selling the entire series. That's the Dan Petavona way of thinking, and it uh, and it really works. <clears throat> have you noticed? Um, I'm sorry, I have all these questions as as I listen to this. The uh, um, have you compared just leaving book one at 99 cents versus dropping it for sales? I guess it's better when you drop it for sales because it gets like that new activity going. Whereas if it's always 99 cents, people will just like shrug it off and be like, eh, you know, it's always 99 cents, whatever. So, I don't know. so here's my plan. Okay. I've done this with every, I've done this with every release. I've done it. I've hit it at 99 cents every uh, from book four and now book five. So every three months you can do it for 99 cents again. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing it that way. And now for book six, when that comes out, which is the final book in the series, I'll do it for 99 cents again for that week. But then once we get into, so the, the sixth book will come out December 15th. And then in January, February, somewhere around there, I will permanently put the first book at 99 cents. And I will do a box set of all six books together. Right. At some point next year, in the beginning of next year, first quarter of next year. So that's when the first book will be 99 cents. It'll still be KDP. It'll still be a ton of page reads. I got like half a million page reads just on book one last uh, this year so far from January, which is ridiculous. So I'm getting a ton of page reads on these. And so I'll keep them in there until that, if it ever drops, then I'll go to draft to digital or whatever. But right now I'm making way too much money to, to chance that. Yeah, I don't blame you. So I'm, I'm leaving in there. So my goal is, and then do this for every... Uh, every new series, six book series, rapid release, <clears throat> three months in a row, and then every three months or two months, um, you know, every three months after that. And then so within a year, all six books will be out. But I'm not doing it for like January next year. I'm going to start the new one. I'm going to take my time and write the first three. But I also will have the box set to promote. Of all six books as well, and the last two Dirty Deeds books. So I've kind of got an idea of, and I have other books I'm writing in the meantime. So I kind of got an idea of, um, that seems to be working for me. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, because uh, I, I'm doing, I'm doing the same thing with my straight Western series, with the Sentinel series. So the pre-orders are up for 99 cents for each. Um, my books are scheduled every other month, so that's as good as I can do for rapid release. So it's, you know, six books in 12 months, you know, every other month it, it comes out. So the series starts this month in October and then it's, um, uh, it finishes up, I think, was it April next year or May? Um, because I didn't finish putting up all the other pre-orders. I only put the first three up so far. Right. Um, but yeah, it, it, things have been working better. Um, I, I, it's funny. I have a lot of pre-sales or pre-orders on 
book one, um, slightly less on book two, and then a little bit slightly less on book three. Um, and I'm just hoping that, you know, I, I think some of the people that pre-ordered book one probably did it before I had book two and book three out. So, you know, they're not looking or whatever. And well, most people are, most people are, are looking. So I, I did book one went up as a pre-order, just book one. And then at 99 cents. And then when, um, it went live, then I put up pre-order for book two. And I also had the first two chapters in the back of the book. And with a link directly to the second book, and then it was ninety nine cents. So I've, I've like already book six is up already, because book six, uh, book five went live. So mm-hmm. I, I always stay ahead that way. But you know, I did it in uh, January, February, and March fifteenth. So I had three books in three months. Bang, 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 and that really worked because I had a lot of pre orders on the first one, a decent amount of pre orders. But not a ton on two until two went, uh, was getting close to, to, to coming out. And then all of a sudden I got more on two than one. And then I got more on three. And then I got way more on four. And then I got double that on five so far. Wow. So I'm hoping six. Like I, I put up uh, book five, you know, you got to, you know, it's got to be up by like the 11th if the book is out by the 15th. So I put it in. And I had to create the um, pre-order for the sixth book, which I threw up there. And within like literally 20 minutes, I got an email. Okay, your book is live. I was like, holy crap. Uh, and mm. I, I immediately got like three pre-orders uh, by the time I checked it. I don't, even, I don't know what it, what it is now, but I know people are, are, are waiting for it and pre-ordering it. And it's the last book in the series. So I'm thinking I'm going to do really well with the pre-order there and it obviously it always helps on that day one when you're you get that big hit of um of sales right you know you're getting depending you're getting several hundred couple i, I i'm gonna this is i'm up to uh 2500 pre-orders on the fifth book wow even at 99 cents that's still seven eight hundred dollars or something on day one plus whoever buys it when it goes live on day one right and all the you know the the trail of sales along the series right exactly so So i'm 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 happy for it i i I like the pre-orders i like um setting them up i was worried once you got past book one you know they might not do anything but so far i think i'm promoting the series well enough and people are responding to it, and I've gotten some almost a hundred reviews, I think, on the first book. So the sales are there. the The sell through is there, which I'm which I'm really excited about. My sell through is better than Dirty Deeds, and Dirty Deeds was like a seventy seven percent sales from book one to book ten, which is amazing. That means three out of four people are reading all the way to book ten. Which I think the average they were like thirty something or forty percent, you know. I was gonna say, yeah, that that's really high. <laughs> so that's really, high. and so far this one is like more than that. It's like it's like eighty to ninety percent or something. If I if I do the math with the page reads and everything, page reads always always throw you because it's not it's actual pages pages. Right. You can't go. Oh, my book is two hundred pages, and I had two hundred page reads. So that means. One uh, somebody read that book. It doesn't really work that way, but I still do that though. Six years later, right. I still, whenever I see my page reads, I'm like, okay, so that's about two people reading the whole book or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, that's what I, I that's what I do. I'll I'll kind of figure it out that way as as well. There's a there's some formula you're supposed to use. I have it written down somewhere, but I'm a I'm a uh, I am a fan <laughs> of the pre-orders, and I think I will continue to. I will continue to do them, and I will hopefully will always have something up there that uh, in the future that will do that. I mean, obviously, I have no control over when I work with publishers if they put it up or not. But um, I know for me, I I know to get to a hundred pre-orders, I was excited, and now to get to twenty-five hundred pre-orders, 
and I still, as we're recording this, I still got two or three days left to, you know, maybe get to 28, 29, maybe 3,000. Who knows? 3,000 would be great. That's like $1,000 in sales on the first day. Yeah, <clears throat> that's awesome. It's, uh, I hope my books work the same way. Obviously, um, you know, I have more work cut out for me, but, but yeah, I, I have, and I still believe that the pre-order also helps by providing that, that deadline, that end point, because as writers, it's too easy to, to get out of focus, work on other things or not be committed to, you know, a, a hard end date on when you're going to finish a book and the pre-order gives you that end date. So you have something to work towards. Uh, that uh, And that definitely helped me with this one. I mean, I literally wrote, I don't know, the, the last, I, I wrote the last act of the book, like the mm -hmm. last 20,000 words in like four or five days because it was due and I knew I had a certain date to get it to beta readers and get it to the editor or there was no way this was getting done. Right. As it is, I'm, I'm way behind with the narrator to get the audio book on it done. So that will come out a couple weeks later than the book will, uh, which is not good. But I've already started on the sixth book, and I'm hoping I can continue to uh, to move along. <laughs> you know, once we once we get into, um, you know, for the rest of this year, I have mm -hmm. no idea what I'm doing for NaNoWriMo. I'm I'm not going to force it if a, if um, it works out that hey, I'm doing a a complete book in November then so be it, but I'm not going to kill myself. I might just go, I'm not doing NaNoWriMo, but I'm going to, I want to still want to write 1600 words a day. And I might, you know, use that. So I'm not, I'm, I'm not really sure. I know this book isn't going to be done in a month and I don't want to force it and, and finish it, but I also don't want to hold on until November for it. Right. You know, but see it's due December 15th. And I have to have um, beta readers and editors and everything else for it. So, <clears throat> yeah, the um, I I think the pre-orders and, and you know kind of what Dale Roberts says in in his article is yeah we kind of touched on a few of these things already with the you know creating buzz by having something out there especially if if you're doing pre-orders for. a continued series, then you're, you're keeping that buzz going from book one to book 10 or whatever it is, because each time they finish a book and they get to the, to the back and see that there's a pre-order for the next one. Um, and that there's more books coming that keeps momentum going. That keeps the, the buzz rolling as people tell friends and everything else. And, and hopefully it keeps your sales going too, as right. people continue to buy keeps those algorithms clicking um you also get the uh, the advantage of having those pre-sales like you had mentioned build up um so that you have the you know the the pop on day one because uh, amazon has a, a reserved category i guess called hot new releases which is um for best-selling books released in the past 30 days so um you know Getting a head start using the um, the pre-order. I mean, most of us are using longer than 30 days for for the pre-orders, but um, using that to help build up that that momentum hopefully also in improves the algorithm of Amazon, giving you visibility to your stuff. Um, what else does he say in here? So he also says um, exactly what you had said. You know putting the, the urgency with a countdown timer. So um, using the discount for pre-orders. So kind of getting people to to jump in early, get the pre-order, buy the book uh, right away because the perception of saving money, getting it before it's full price. I mean, everybody wants a deal. So uh, that goes a long way too towards building the, the whole... Um, amping up of, of the urgency to, to get into the book or the series, whatever you have. Right. 
Um, he also says that, you know, using the, the pre-order period for building beta readers and potential reviewers, um, I, I, I guess I don't always associate the pre-order with that because if, if the book is ready before the pre-order is, you know, I guess you can do the same thing with beta readers or or reviewers but i guess that you know it's a good way to again if you're amping up that first 30 days then yeah it's probably a good idea to utilize that pre-order period to to get people to build up that buzz read it um throw up some reviews or you know hopefully people agree to review on day one so you start off with 10 15 whatever right reviews from day one but, um, you know, basically Dale's whole thing is he believes in it. He thinks it's a good idea. He's kind of um, saying that he he likes to use the pre-order for the same things that uh, you were kind of mentioning. So, um, again, I, I just thought it was a good time to go through that, especially with both of us kind of changing on, on how we're using the pre-orders. Um, you're you're definitely ahead of the game on it. Um, I'm, I'm and, all I'm all in, and I'm studying you. Yeah, I mean, I am. I am. I definitely and I, well, and I'm studying. I'm studying Wayne Stinnett. I'm, I'm Dan Patagona. I'm studying the people who are literally making six figures or more a year without a problem, based on these systems. Right. You know, and it's one. One of those, like we've we've talked about in previous episodes, some of the um, snake oil salesmen that we followed in the past or spent money on their their classes and their webinars and all that other crap to find out that they're not making any money or selling really selling any books. The guys that I'm paying attention to are actually selling books. They're they're literally out there doing this, making money. So for me, that's kind of um, you know that that. That's kind of the key is is to keep studying, to keep getting better at at what I'm doing, and and you know what, all that is great, and that his article is great, um, and that could all go away tomorrow. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I always worry about that because it's like, oh, the, this is what everybody is doing. You know, it's like the latest fad or something like BookBub ads or Amazon ads, and then and then things tail off. Um, but I think you're right. Y- you have to have to build a system i mean if you're running a business any kind of business um and if you're looking to be successful uh from a financial standpoint with releasing books you have to come up with a with a viable business system that is repeatable um reliable and something that you can measure you know so you have to have the pieces in place or else you're just throwing darts at a board or or like i like to say that Chuck Buddha method, which is you just write a book, you throw it up on Amazon and then close your eyes and hope for the best. Yeah. Which is what I've done in the past. Um, right. And that's, and that's that it's always the, it's always the, the, the problem of being all in on a certain system or a certain way. You got to really be careful and you got to be able to walk away from it at some point if it's not working for, for you, but you can't go out. Oh, it, Oh, I put it up and I didn't do anything else with it. I put it up on pre-order and I didn't tell anybody and I didn't do ads and I didn't do anything. And 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 ads, I I I also talk like Twitter. Every day, every day I'm on there doing uh, hashtag writers lift. Every day, like every 15, 20 minutes, I'm. Anyway, yes, that is rain in the background. All of a sudden, it started raining really bad. Where where, where was I? Minecraft. Right. So every ten minutes, you you reset and you, you you go hop in a bed and you sleep and then the day resets and it gives you like their your respawn part so then i always every 10 i always pause it go to twitter and then i find another the next writer's lift and then i share and i've been sharing like the 99 cent for the for shakedown or the 99 cent pre-order um for tied down for the fifth book and i just kept rotating those uh all day like every 10 minutes I would find a different one 
And especially if it was new people that I hadn't been following before. And I would also follow them and then go down the list and follow everybody and, and uh, share a couple things here and there. And hmm. it doesn't cost me anything. It's just time to do it. Um, and I was doing it while I was working while I was playing. So I didn't feel so bad for not writing all day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And I did that for, like I said, for several hours. So I got a ton of tweets out. Now, it might, that might have pissed some people off, like, enough already, dude. But still, it was, there was a lot of it, uh, uh, there was a lot of it out there. There was enough of it out there, which was good. So that's kind of my thing. I'm, I'm just constantly, I, I still believe in social media. I still believe of going in and talking with people and ignoring the trolls and ignoring the idiots and just simply blocking people and not talking with them. Cause there's more than enough people on Twitter for me and, and Twitter and Instagram are the only two I'm really on. Facebook is really shared stuff that I'm dropping on there. Uh, or if somebody has a question for me or tags me on something. So I'm, I'm, I'm not on social media as much as I used to be, but I think it, I think it helps. And I think, you really see me in those parts where I'm doing a pre-order, where I have something to promote. Uh, and I'm not just posting like crazy to promote. I'm also interacting with people, talking with, with people. Oh, Chuck's got Sentinel three book series just popped up. Okay, let me share it. You know what I mean? Let me set it up on my buffer. So I'm doing things like that. The people who, who help me, I help them. I found the new uh, thriller author that lives here in town that I've been going back and forth with and I will probably go to lunch at some point. So it's like those things are still helpful for me. And, um, the pre-order is just another excuse for me to, to get my shit together and get out there and, and do things. Right. Yeah. As long as, as long as you don't do what I did and miss the deadline. Yeah. That's not good. Then you should be fine. Um, so what happens if you miss it again? Do you still you just get another year? You can't do it, or or is there severe penalties? I, you know, I think the, I think the penalty is not as stiff now because there's a few authors that I always snatch up their their work, um, even if I'm behind reading it, and I've gotten a couple of notices um, where they missed their pre order. Hmm. And um, and they don't seem to be in in Amazon jail, you know, because the the book just goes to like another uh, date or whenever they're gonna release it, and then they have other pre orders that come out, you know, later in the year or the following year. So I I, I don't know, like maybe the the jail time is still a year, um, like it used to be, and it's just the timing of their pre orders, and that's why I don't know. Maybe they're they, maybe they already have all the other pre orders up. That could be too. You know, they they might have spread them out far, you know, far enough. Because I'm doing like three months, three months out uh, for these. But I technically could. I I know there will be a um, keep working through the box set. I could do a pre order on it at some point. Mm -hmm. I know there will be my third short story collection coming out November 21st. So I could put that up whenever I want. Um, I never like doing that until I'm, I have the book ready. That first, that would be the smart way to first, do it. <laughs> first draft, yeah, first draft for the book is is done. Uh, I mean, unless it's like this series, because I know I have three months to, to to write this book now, and I've already started it. So uh, that that's kind of the push there. But for a book that there is, there's no like it has to be out. Um, I think I would not uh, rush it unless there was nothing else I'm working on. And, you know, there's always 14 and 15 stories I'm working on. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I just lost my train of thought. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, but anyway, so this is a great article. I will, um, if I remember, I will tag it in the description. Yep. And so everybody can, uh, can see it and, uh, let us know about your own uh, stuff as well. Um, and also for the future, 
throwing it out there, everybody. We need more questions. We are we need more questions for Chuck's mailbag. So get those questions to us. Uh, writing, publishing, whatever you want to talk about with us. Uh, just go to either armandrosamelia at gmail.com or our um, Twitter, uh, The Mondo Method, and just send a uh, direct message there, and we will grab it, and I will let you know that we received it, and then we will answer it at our convenience. So You have to make fun of Nick Zinn. Yeah, we're getting a little light on the uh, questions now. So, But, uh, I mean, yeah, if you're Nick Zinn, you just send it right to Chuck and completely <laughs> throw the entire system completely out of whack because then when i have the listing of all the questions in front of me and then chuck's like okay this is one from nick zinn i'm like i don't have this on my list <laughs> and, and i don't have the question in front of me now so i I, don't, I can't even answer this one but i mean you you know nick you do you do you 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 do whatever you feel is appropriate you're my boy blue <laughs> <laughs> oh. speaking of nick zinn though i know he does drink Yes. Reaper's Brew Coffee, that's right. Yes. Reaper'sBrew.com, check them out. And use Mondo at checkout, M-A-N-D-O. You get 10% off of new orders. Plus, you receive a free gift. Uh, They got mugs. They got a lot of really cool stuff on their website. So check them out. All right, Chuck. We had some uh, technical difficulties. So I'm going to have to do some editing. You know I hate editing. Yeah, if there's a gap somewhere in there, just... um... Whatever. Right. Hum a tune or something yeah. until we come back. Yeah, make pretend that everything it sounded good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not editing shit. Putting it all together. All right, man, let's uh, do this next week. All right. <laughs>